Hey guys, Credit Shifu here, and today we're going to be talking about my view on Bitcoin. And I've wanted to make this video for a while, um, but I've sort of waited until I've had more to talk about, more substance to put in this video rather than just, uh, you know, I think this, you know. Um, so you may be wondering, did I invest in Bitcoin? Uh, the answer is no. I've known about it since, uh, since it was around uh, 1200 uh, in dollars in value for one Bitcoin. Um, but at the beginning, I chose not to invest in it. And now you could be saying, well, you know, you must be kicking yourself thinking, you know, oh man, I should have invested. And that's true, you know, you, if I had invested in it at uh, $1,200 and just bought one, you know, I would have, at its peak, I would have been able to sell that for $20,000. So that's a 2,000% almost, almost 2,000% return, right? Um, but, you know, for a true investor who doesn't view the markets emotionally, um, that's just something to learn from rather than something to be annoyed about, right? So let's get back. Let's tell the whole story. So I have a friend who, you know, he's, he's a professional finance guy. He's worked for some investment bank in the past. He's now a finance journalist. Uh, he told me about it at 1,200, uh, when the value of Bitcoin was 1,200. He had bought it when the value was at $800 per Bitcoin. Uh, and I think he might have bought some at 400 as well, but so at 400, 800, he bought in. Now he held it for several years. I think he bought it back in 2012. So he's held it from 2012 until certainly the end of 2016 or early 2017. I'm not quite sure when he sold it, but I believe he sold it when the price was around $18,000. And he told me that it had risen so much that it then made up 90% of his net worth at the time when he sold it, right? So if you know about you know creating a diversified portfolio of investments, you can't have 90% of your <laughs> your investments in one in one asset, right? Uh, typically, I would you know you don't want really to be more than 10% in one asset. So he sold it. He took home a great profit, and now he's investing that money in other things. Um, so I look at that thinking, well, you know, that's something to learn from. You know, uh, rather than feeling sad, feeling like oh, you know, I should have invested in it at the time. It's more learning from that experience to be able to identify similar um, opportunities um, that are, you know, similar opportunities for growth. Now, Bitcoin has come down now. It's come down to about $10,000. Uh, I think it's like 9,998 at the time of shooting this video. Does that mean I'm gonna go out and buy it? I don't know. I mean, Ty Lopez is telling everyone to buy it. He thinks it's gonna go down to uh, 8,500 and he says he can't wait to buy in at 8,500. Um, you know, I think it's worth considering, but uh, I'll give you the reasons why I don't really favor this as an investment. So first of all, um, the so-called founder of it, Satoshi Nakamoto, if that even is a person or maybe it's a group of people, um, basically the, the, no one's met the founder. The, the creator, all right? Yet this person owns 1 million Bitcoins. And at today's value, that would be valued at uh, $10 billion. So that's a lot, that's a, a lot of power, you know, uh, to be in the hands of one person and one person who is, you know, who's a secret, no one knows who they are. I would ask you this, would you invest in a company whose CEO uh, was a secret, whose identity was secret? No. Of course you wouldn't. You'd think something strange was going on. So from that point of view, that's one of the things I don't like about it. Uh, the second thing about it is that it is, you know, ethereal. There's no physical product associated with it, no physical company. Uh, I think the name of the other, that other cryptocurrency, Ethereum, is very, is very apt, you know, because it's, it's ethereal. It's something that only exists within a computer, within a computer network. Um, and it's not actually a physical thing. Now you could say that about the US dollar and many other currencies around the world. They are technically fiat currencies. They don't have any value in and of themselves in that they're not really, they're not based off of the gold standard anymore. You can't exchange them for a certain amount of gold like we used to have decades ago, okay? They're not based off of that anymore. But they are based off of the strength of the US economy. And that includes, you know, a load of companies, um, the Federal Reserve Bank, the government that sets the budget, the military that protects the country, like the entire country basically is what you're investing in uh, when you buy the US dollar or you're paid in US dollars. Um, so it's a very, you know, it's very stable, right? And the, the type of rates that go up and down 
um, it, it only fluctuates within quite a narrow band. So it's a very stable currency. When you look at Bitcoin, you know, some analysts, they say that it's not really even a currency because it just fluctuates so much. Um, how can you call it a currency? You know, it's a super volatile uh, investment, basically. Um, you can't really call it a currency. I, I remember looking at some uh, realtors who were, you know, talking about the question of whether you could buy a house with Bitcoin. And the answer was no, because, you know, when you buy a house, you normally have a period of escrow where you're money goes into an escrow account and then once the the uh, the previous homeowner has, is handing over the deed to you and you close on the deal only then does your money get given to them right and it, it kind of protects you from being ripped off and you know make sure everything is gone goes through smoothly and legally and that money goes into that account for like 30 days or two months or whatever but if uh, <laughs> if you did that with Bitcoin, how how could you do that? I mean, you could put like say two hundred thousand worth of Bitcoin in at the beginning. Uh, by the end, maybe it's lost fifty percent of its value by the time you're actually handing over the house. So uh, it's it's difficult to use it as a currency. So it is a investment vehicle, I would say, rather than a currency. Um, so I, I went off on a massive tangent there. Anyway, my original point was it's not backed up by anything physical. It's not like a company that you can invest in and you actually own a portion of a company that has offices and factories and physical products that are shipping out, a list of clients that they're connected with that, you know, create value. Okay. It doesn't have that. It's only the value based on what people are willing to pay for it. And that brings me to my next point, uh, is that it's volatility. Now, Volatility can go both ways. Volatility can be to your advantage if it's incredibly volatile and it shoots up. That's great. You know, you sell off and you're rich, right? But it can also go the other way where, you know, recently Bitcoin has come down due to some, well, due to many factors, but some of those factors have been clamped down uh, in certain countries like South Korea was putting in some regulations on it. China has, has been doing stuff to like clamp down on it, regulate it. And we don't know what we're going to see, especially, you know, here in the U.S., we don't know what's going to happen in the next few years, you know. Uh, is the government going to suddenly rec regulate it and it's going to lose its value? You know, we just do not know. Um, there's also the thing about, like, could Satoshi Nakamoto suddenly sell all his Bitcoins and, you know, that would tank the price too. So all of these things are, are big risks with it. Um, so... My final point is, do I think you should invest in Bitcoin? Well, you know, some people are calling Bitcoin the new gold, right? So for rich people or people with money, gold is seen as a great store of value that they'll invest in. People are looking at Bitcoin like that. You know, you buy it, buy it when it's low and then, you know, perhaps in times of crisis, people will flock to these alternative investments and the price will shoot up. I mean, that is one way to look at it. And, you know, people aren't wrong to necessarily look at it like that. Um, I just think you shouldn't have too much exposure to it. So, you know, my friend who'd bought in at the beginning, he hadn't taken a huge risk, but it ended up being 90% of his net worth. Uh, he got out, sold most of it. I didn't ask him actually how much he sold, but he, he definitely made a ton of money off of it. Um, and so do I recommend it for people? Yeah, I would say just if you want to invest in it, go for it, but don't invest more than 10% of your net worth or 10% of your not of your net worth, actually, 10% of your actual savings or stock portfolio. Don't go more than 10%. That's my recommendation. And when you're into something like this, you have to accept that you could lose, you know, maybe 50% of your money, right? Um, you got to be ready to hold it for the long haul. Uh, and if it really tanks, be ready to lose it. I mean, just look at BitConnect, right? I mean, it's a little bit different because that thing undoubtedly was a scam. And there are things in Bitcoin that kind of show that it is more... Um, it, it's not really the same thing as BitConnect was. BitConnect really was just a Ponzi scheme. Um, Bitcoin, uh, it's something new. It's probably not like a scam scheme like that, but there are these super unstable variables that can make you go up and down and, and you know, potentially make you lose a huge amount of money. So just be careful with it. Um, if you're going to invest in it, keep your investment under 10% of, you know, the money that you have invested in other stuff. Um, and yeah, if you've invested in Bitcoin or if you've made money or if you've lost with it, uh, please leave your comments below. Tell me all about it. There is a very, very small possibility that I may invest a small amount of money into it, um, but most probably not. I prefer things that have physical uh, products. So thanks guys for watching. Please subscribe if you're new. Give this video a like and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.